All right, uh, let me turn it on here. I'll show you that I'm actually getting a number now uh, and a decimal place. And you would say, oh, it's working. Uh, and it sorta is, it sorta isn't, but I believe I know what the, what the issue is. So I'm going to uh, disconnect the jump. I'll sh show you what this jumper does, but I'm gonna disconnect it so you can see what happens. If I disconnect the jumper, uh, it just freezes and then, and then nothing really happens. Uh, and it's just gonna, it's gonna stay there. So if I put the jumper back on, uh, well, let me turn it on and off. Let me turn it on and off and you can see that, yeah, it's just not doing anything at all, right? It's just, it's just dead. I'll put the jumper back on and then I'll turn it on and off. And here we get numbers and it all seems to be good. So what is the magic jumper and why is it working and what does it point to? And then how do I fix it? So yeah, let's look at those things. So everything is pointing to some problem in the front end here. And uh, at first I thought, well, I'm always skeptical of FETs. Maybe these dual FETs are dead. I first uh, injected signals on pins two and three, the op amp, and I could get it to toggle. And then I injected pins on the gates of the two FETs and I got it to toggle. So everything seems to be working. In fact, every single time I go look at one component, they all seem to be fine. Um, and it's kind of a system issue. So. Um, you take a look at this op amp, it is a, uh, a feedback, right? So this thing has gain and it gets its gain with some resistors. And so the output gets fed back around to the input, right? So this is the feedback path, right? This is the input and then this is the other. Uh, so it's like a non-inverting amplifier and this is the, uh, this is the output here. And it gets pulled off depending on which switch, switch you have pressed, whether it's the 20 volt switch or the 200 millivolt switch, 20 volt millivolt switch, okay? But if you are on the largest range, then it's shown here, whereas all the switches are this direction. So the feedback, let me get, uh, let me get something to point with so I'm not, not with fat fingers in there. Okay, so this is the, the feedback here, but the feedback normally goes through some resistors, then it goes back around. But what happens if this is a gain of one, right? This comes here, it goes through this switch, 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 and then finally comes back around. And so it has to go through one, two, three, four, five, six switches. So if any one of those switches is dirty, <laughs> doesn't make a good contact, you will have an open loop and this thing will peg onto one side, which is what I see. This, this test point here is always pegged over to one side. And that's because I never have any feedback happening. Well, um, so what did I do to test this hypothesis? Well, I just put a jumper between here and here. And that's what that wire does. It just adds a jumper from here to here and it puts it into a gain of one. And then it works just great. Um, so it obviously, obviously points to one or more of these switches is, is not working right. Um, I also see some dirty switch phenomena from other reasons stuff too. Anyway, I'm, I'm convinced that this whole thing uh, is a switch problem. Um, okay, so, well, that's great. Then you just spray on some deoxid and you're done, right? Super, super simple. Um, let me... Let me take the front off and we'll get access to these switches and I'll put on a, a, a lens that allows us to look really, really close. And we can look at these switches and see, see what would the, be the best way to try to uh, clean these things. All right, so here are the switches and there is a lot of them. Um, and they are very, very long. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine. So there's nine contacts per row and each switch has two rows and the contacts are on the sides of the switches. Um, so uh, how can I explain this? So these uh, uh, solder lugs here go straight down and then the switch has a contact that slides with the uh, center piece of plastic here that moves back and forth. And you say, oh great, just spray some contact cleaner in there. Well, this is a clear piece of plastic and uh, it goes over the entire top of the switch. 
The switch is enclosed on all sides, so if you're familiar with Tektronix switches like this, the bottoms are open. In fact, you can actually disassemble things and you can push the switch all the way through and uh, get it to uh, go out if you really wanted to disassemble the whole thing. Um, but you can just spray contact cleaner in the back side of a Tektronix switch and they're really easy to clean. But there's no back, it's sealed. And there's no top, it's sealed. And the front, uh, in order to get the liquid to wick all the way into the back, it seems a bit, mm, I don't know if it'll ever work. And then, to, to, to make it worse, I don't want any of that contact cleaner to be running into any of this area because this is the super sensitive area for low currents and stuff. So I would have to turn it upside down and, ah, yeah, this is a nightmare. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to do. I really don't. Um, while it may be possible to disassemble these switches, there's a, there's some, I don't know if you can actually do it. I think you can't, once it's all soldered together, you can't, you can't move this plastic piece. And I, I don't think there's any way to do it. Now, will the center section slide out if you take out the retaining pin? These generally have a, have some type of pin in them, but I believe in this, it's on the bottom side. Not, well, that's not true. Yeah, see? Ah, uh, see this one has a, has the a little, I'm not pointing on the right spots for you guys. This one has a little, the little pin here that rides in the little on off thing. You can see how it operates. But these guys here are ganged together. I think that gang mechanism is done underneath. And if you take it apart, you may just write the gang mechanism. I, I don't know if this is actually repairable or not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to spray these a little bit, see if I can get them to go better. Um, but like I said, I'm really nervous about getting anything into the other part of the switch, uh, into this other uh, part of the circuit, because uh, I want to keep this all clean. I don't want anything running in over there. Uh, bad, bad, bad. So anyway, I, uh, let me give it a try and uh, I'll come back and see if anything improved or not. Okay. Uh, well... I'm injecting three and a half volts. And if I push some buttons here, I get three, yeah. I'm injecting 3.548, 3.5, yeah, see, it's measuring really good. All right, so, um, 3.6, 3.5, 3.548, yep, 3.548 is what I'm injecting, perfect. And then it's overloading in that direction. So I am getting it to work. I don't know how great it is. Let me, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna laugh just when you see what I did. Uh, people are either gonna th either think that I'm stupid or I'm a genius. So <laughs> it's gonna be one of the two. Oh man. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me turn this thing off and unplug it. And let me flip it over so you can see the switches. There we go. Let me move you in. All right. So, if you see at the top of each switch, I've drilled a hole. <laughs> I've drilled a hole in each switch. And then I can squirt in the cleaning fluid into the switch. Um, yeah. So there you go. Now, you know, you're going to say, well, then now dirt's going to get in there, but hey, it's in a box. It's, uh, and it wasn't going to work without it. So, yeah, anyway, there you go. I guess I could go back and I could plug up all the holes with some type of adhesive or something. But anyway, that's my solution. Drill holes in your switches and then pour in a bunch of uh, contact cleaner. It does seem to work now. Okay, there we go. Uh, we're putting, uh, where is it? Uh, right there. Uh, 5.025, 5 5.025, 5 very good. So anyway, it works. Um, I'm not gonna calibrate it because it doesn't warrant calibration. Um, and uh, the switches are a bit flaky. They are flaky, but uh, it does seem to work and maybe it'll work uh, the longer you use it. I'll tell my friend how to clean these, the, the little holes I put in there and uh, call it quits from there. Anyway, uh, this has been a 
3465A with a 3465B uh, board inside, so call it what you want.